Okay, the first nil-nil draw of the tournament. Uh, Spain nil, Sweden nil. I am stunned that Spain haven't put about six or seven in the back of the net. Um, mm, I don't know what both teams can take from this. Sweden can be very happy with the draw. The fact that Slovakia obviously won in the other game against Poland really opens the group up. And I think Sweden will be target, targeting the Slovakia and Poland games to, to try and get that win or a uh, scoring draw. I think goal difference is going to be very crucial in this group, especially with how the second round format works and the fact that some third place teams will qualify for the next round. Being, and I think this is where goal difference is, is going to prove key. Spain, wasteful in front of net, lots of possession and, and no actual end product. I mean, Olsen, the Swedish goalkeeper, was outstanding today. Um, of that, that is that is something of note, is he pulled off a, a series of top quality saves in both halves. And Sweden had a few moments where they, they caught Spain out on the counter-attack. And this is the problem when you have loads of possession and, and you're controlling the tempo of the game. If you turn the ball over... Uh, you run the risk of if your defence is switched off and the goalkeeper is switched off, you, you can concede. Now, that didn't happen in this game, but it has happened in the past with Spain. I remember 2010 in the World Cup, which they won the tournament, but they lost to Switzerland in a similar fashion where they were the dominant team. They're passing in the ticky-tacky, little triangles, pass and move, but the defence switched off and the goalkeeper switched off and then Dirty Ock goes and scores the winner. I thought Sweden might do that today. They were lacking that bit of quality up front. Um, they were lacking that pace up front as well. And the press wasn't good enough from Sweden. Uh, they were pre the, the, Isaac was going, which is good, but no one was following it up. Um, they weren't pressing as a team. They were pressing in ones and twos, which meant Spain have an easy out ball. Um, the way Spain played the second half, they weren't as good as the first half. I think the heat and humidity in Seville had a, had a part to play in that. It was quite warm when the kickoff started. And even... Late in the evening now, it will still be in the mid-twenties in Seville. That would have taken an effect. You look at the players at half-time, they were drenched in sweat. Absolutely exhausted. Uh, fatigue, lots of cramp. Um, but the Spanish finishing was not good enough. Um, Morata, just not good enough. He is a confidence player. I'm not saying he's a bad player. Clearly, his confidence is a bit lacking. The combinations aren't quite quite right there's not the, the fluency of, of previous Spain teams they are missing some key players Busquets is out with illness there's no um, PK no Ramos De, De Gea is not starting they put Simeon the uh, Bilbao goalkeeper as the starter tonight so there's there's a new backline defensive uh, unit the midfield yeah I mean, you know, Xavi and, and Iniesta are, are big misses. I mean, they, they've obviously retired now, but they are hard to replace. Koke is more of a defensively-minded midfielder, but he had chances. Uh, you know, I mean, Olsen, the Swedish goalkeeper, was the best Swedish player. He was a brick wall, pulled off save after save. But when the, Swe the Swedish would be happy also with a lot of chances being taken outside the box from distance from players who are not known as goal scorers. When, when you've got centre-backs and defensive midfielders trying to blast it in from 30 yards, you know you're frustrating the Spanish. And they, they were snatching at chances. They were not as clinical in front of goal as they should have been. Wasteful. You look at the shots on target to off target. At one point, I think they had 14 or 15 shots off target with three shots on target midway through the second half. Towards the end of the second half, they had more shots on target. But they're rushing the play. They're they're trying to force the shot. They're trying to force the chance. Sweden, they were just disappointing in the counter attack. They didn't have enough pace. Their 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 press was as I say ones and twos. There was no unified press going up in two banks of four with with two forwards pressing. Uh, they they're not a team with a lot of pace. They they if you if you're going to be organised, just sit back a little bit more and and use that organisation rather than pressing ones and twos. That's how you gaps form and. and space appears but Spain didn't take enough advantage of that and then for periods in the second half Spain became very narrow they weren't crossing enough balls because they were getting more success when they were swinging the ball in from the flanks they were trying to pass it through the middle and well Spain had found that Sweden were two banks of four and two centre forwards so you're trying to play through the middle with through a very crowded congested middle middle channel So, I don't know what Spain take from this. I think Luis Enrique needs to get his arm around Morata and say, look, you, 
not had the best game, but you were creating, you were trying. He needs to talk to his midfielders and say, right, you need to be a bit more, find the space, pass it quicker. It's going to be interesting what Spain do in the second game. It's going to be interesting what Sweden do in the second game. I mean, Slovakia winning earlier has really thrown the cat amongst the pigeons in this group, really opened it up. I think Sweden will be happy with their defensive display in keeping a clean sheet. I think goal difference is also going to prove crucial. And Poland, I mean, I think could finish bottom in this group. Um, the, the Poles didn't show enough against Slovakia, and Slovakia played to their strengths. Spain tried to force the issue. Sweden, there's got to be someone in their squad with a bit more pace. Um, that's what they're lacking. They are a hard-working unit. We can see that the Sweden work hard for each other, but they need to work on their press. If they're going to congest the midfield and, and, and set up as a 4-4-2, the press needs to be more unified. They can work on that. Uh, and they need to work on, on, yeah, when they do get an opportunity, try and at least hit the target, make the goalkeeper work. They didn't do enough of that on the counter-attack. And if they're going to get a set play, which is clearly Sweden's plan, is to play for set plays, play for corners, play for the long throw from Linderhoff, play for free kicks, try and break the play down and then force a retaliatory foul from Spain, which they did. They need to be more accurate with their set plays. Spain needs to be more patient. They're trying to pass it into the net from the get-go doesn't work like that you've got to earn the right to to get it in the back of the net a little bit they try to force the play disappointing game it was not the best game I think this is the worst game so far I mean full credit to also I think he for me was the man of the match uh, the Swedish goalkeeper but all told I think yeah disappointing performance by both sides I think Sweden defensively were defending for each other absolutely and they were throwing blocks in there and there clearing it, it's that second phase where they're just inviting pressure back on themselves, but it was a rear guard action by Sweden but but Spain I think would be very frustrated and disappointed with not even getting one goal, I mean they should have had six or seven uh, and when you're shooting from distance I and mean, you've got centre backs and, and, and defensive midfielders like Koke having shots from 30 yards you know, Koke is not renowned for his goal scoring prowess from midfield, he can put them in but he's not a regular goal scorer you know, you know that you are frustrating the opposition. Spain need to reset. I mean, they don't for the next two games. They need to play with a little bit more patience um, and use the wide areas. They've got, you know, Jordi Alba, for example, great win back. Use those wide areas because clearly they have got pace in those areas to swing those balls in. And Morata is very good in the air. If you're going to stick with Morata up front, at least give him the service where he can get his head on it because heading the ball is very, very good. Um, he may be lacking a bit of confidence, but at least give him a chance to, to even scramble a goal in, because that will definitely help his confidence, but disappointing. I don't, I'm amazed that I managed to get uh, an eight-minute video out of this, but there we go. Place your thoughts below on the game. Um, I mean, Slovakia now are actually throwing the cat amongst the pigeons with their result. The group's wide open now, uh, and that was the first nil-nil. Uh, surprising it's been, well, this quick into the tournament, considering how all the other games have gone. And the, and the play we've seen over the last you know four days. But thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts below, and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.